concepts in embryology for basic sciences curriculum. This is uh, an introduction to the overall uh, basic sciences element of uh, embryology and then we're going to be following on with uh, limb embryology and of course with the other material that I have online. So the definition of embryology, the definition is the study of an origin of the origin and the development of an organism. Prenatal period is before birth, 38 weeks from conception to birth, average fetal age. Gynecological timing has been from LMP, therefore first to 40 weeks gestational age. Um, so we have the date of conception that has been at times can be difficult to uh, ascertain. So tra uh, traditional artificial division. We have the embryonic, which is the period of the first eight weeks. This is where all the important major organs are formed. So this is a very, very important time uh, because anything uh, not happening right or, or misfolding at this point will ca cause um, organs to not be formed at all or formed in the wrong places. So then we have the fetal period, which is the, the remaining 30 weeks. And this is where the organs start to grow larger and become more complex and again this is also a period in which uh, we can see um, some abnormalities which we're going to discuss through the lecture. So the embryonic period uh, during the first eight weeks after conception we have the major embryological vents which are the organs forming from three primary germ tissues and the emergence of the basic body plan. So here we can just see uh, from 25 days 3.5 millimetres up to 36, day, 36 days where we have a, around 10 millimetres up to 56 days 30 millimetres where we can start to really start to see the formation of the, the human human form in more detail so the fetal period duration weeks 9 to 38 after conception or until birth uh, and then major fetal events is organs growing in size and complexity. And here we can just see 18.5 centimetres. This, this is the size of a 20-week fetus. And you can see this uh, very human-like characteristics at this point. So let's go back to the beginning and look at fertilisation uh, to implantation. So as ovulation occurs, the oocyte egg travels up the uterine tube at which point it may or may not be fertilized with the, um, the sperm. So in the case of fertilization, the sperm and the egg meet. And then this would be known as the first stage, which is the zygote, the zygote's fertilized egg. Then as we continue to travel down, we have the uh, four cell stage, which is two days later. So we can see this is now divided into four cells. And then as we continue further down, three days later, we have a molula. And then four days, we have an early blastocyst. And we can see the blastocyst cavity. And as we continue on, uh, we follow through into the uterus and eventually into the cavity of the uterus, we have this implanting blastocyst at around six days. And within the blastocyst, we can see we have the cavity and then we have the trophoblast and the inner cell mass and we're just going to look at how this invaginates into the wall. So ovulation, the egg is released into the peritoneal cavity, travels down the fallopian tube in which fertilization occurs. At conception in fallopian, in fallopian tube material and paternal genetic material join to form a new human life, a zygote. Cell division occurs with travel down the tube and into the uterus. Week 1 post conception, we have the zygote divi divides repeatedly moving down the tube and the uterus cleavage. The daughter cells are called the blastomeres, and the morula, the solid cluster of 12 to 16 of these blastomeres, at around 72 hours. Day four, we have late 60 cell morulas entering the uterus, taking up fluid, becoming a blastocyst. So let's just go through and look at this again. Uh, we've seen the early zygote, the full stage, the morula, the early blastocyst, and then down into the implanting blastocyst upon the wall, which we shall look at how this uh, happens. 
So the blastocyst stage, two distinct types of cells. We have the inner cell mass, which we can see here, forms the embryo. So this inner cell mass is what's going to form the embryo. And then the trophoblast layer of cells surrounding the cavity, this is what's going to form the very important placenta. And it floats for about three days, implantation on about day six post-conception. Trophoblast erodes the uterine wall. It takes one week to complete this erosion process. If inner cell mass of a single blastocyst divides, we're going to have monozygotic, which is identical twins. So let's look at the schematic. Week two, inner cell mass divides into an epiblast and a hyperblast. The two fluid filled sacs, the amnionic sac from the epiblast, yolk sac from the hyperblast, we have this bilaminar embryonic disc area of contrast, and this is going to give rise to the whole body. So, as we can see, as we continue down, down day six, we have the inner cell mass, trophoblast coming down into around day seven, where we have the trophoblast starting to invaginate into the wall of the uterus. We still have the inner cell mass following this. And by day 9, we have a further invagination of the trophoblast. And now we have the additional uh, hyperblast and the epiblast region and the amniotic sac cavity. So as we continue down into day 11, we can see that we have the epiblast and we have the bilaminar embryonic disc the hyperblast, the yolk sac cavity, so all of this we can see and we can see this invagination through into the, uh, the wall of the uterus and an almost complete uh, uh, transference through at this point. So week three, there's a few things going on that we need to just be aware of. Okay, this is where we're going to go from the bilaminar to trilaminar disc. There's three primary germ layers, all body tissues develop from these. These are the ectoderm, the endoderm, and the mesoderm. And we're going to talk about these and look at them in simplistic ways just to have an understanding of what they do, where they go, and, and essentially how they do all uh, they need to do in the body. <coughs> so here we can just see a bilaminar embryonic disc, lateral to superior view. We can see the primitive streak. And then we have the hyperblast and the epiblast, and we have the region of the head, uh, the yolk sac, and this is going to be uh, that region of the head. So it's going to be cranial and then tail cordial. And again, we can see bilaminal embryonic disc, right, lateral superior view. Again, we have the hyperblast and the epiblast. We can see the head region and the tail. And then just looking from above, we can see the primitive streak, the primitive node, and we're going to start to consider how we uh, go from this bilamina to trilamina uh, positioning, and then how we start to get the important foldings, which are going to make a, a lot more uh, sense to when we consider things like body cavities. So here we can just see the epiblast and the hyperblast, the primitive streak, the endoderm, and then eventually we have the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the definitive uh, endoderm at around 16 days. So formation of the germ layers. So the primitive streak groove on the dorsal surface of the epiblast, grass, uh, grass invagination of the epiblast cells. Days 14 to 15, they replace the hyperblast, becoming the endoderm. And then day 16, the mesoderm, a new third layer is formed in between. And then these epiblast cells remaining on the surface are ectoderm. So again, let's just have a quick look at these different images. We have the bilaminar embryonic disc, lateral to superior view. We've got the hyperblast, the epiblast, region of the head and the region of the tail. Just from an overview, we can see... Uh, the head, tail, left and right region, the yolk sac and the cut edge of the amnion. And then from days 14 to 15, we see the primitive streak, the endoderm. And then as we progress through to day 16, we have this mesoderm as well. This definitive endoderm and the mesoderm, which we're going to start to look at. So the three germ tissue, T, 
tissues. Uh, these are as in German, Germanite or not, uh, not germs, you know, as in germs that you might catch. Early specialization of cells, they are precursors, and the ectoderm and endoderm are epithelial tissue, which is going to form sheets of tissues, which we're going to start to look at. Mesoderm is mesenchymal, uh, mesenchyme tissue. Mesenchyme cells are star-shaped and do not attach to one another, and due to this they can migrate freely. The notochord at day 16 to 18 is primitive node epiblast cells invaginate and migrate anteriorly with some underdone cells and we have this rod defining the body axis which is going to be formed. This is going to be the imp uh, very important site of the future vertebral column. And here we can just see the amniotic sac, the plain section of the head and we can see the primitive strake and uh, the primitive node, we have the notochord and the amnion, and here we have the embryonic disc, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm, and this is the yolk sac, yolk, uh, yolk sac, and here we can just see from the right and from the left, we have the invaginating mesodermal cells uh, between the endoderm and the ectoderm, and so this is going to start to uh, make more sense as we start to look at how this all comes in uh, and then ultimately folds in uh, and zipper likes together. So, new relation. The notochord signals the overlying ectoderm. Formation begins of the spinal cord and brain. This is known as new relation. The neural plate to neural groove to neural tube, tube is pinched off, uh, pinched off in the body. So here we have uh, the tail and the head, left and right side, the primitive streak. Now here as we look at this cross section we have the surface ectoderm, the neural plate, the future neural crest and this is of course the region of the notochord. And here we can see the, am amnion, the amnionic cavity, we have the neural plate, we have the ectoderm and the mesoderm in the middle and of course we have the notochord and the endodome posteriorly and the yolk sac which are all going to eventually fuse in. So by day 22 we start to see this neural folding, we have the somite, here we have the neural fold, this is going to be the tail edge, the cut edge of the amnion and then as we were to if we were to imagine this, this would what it would uh, look like on the, on the human overall, this is the ultimate uh, design that we're looking to get to. So here we have the neural tube itself, the surface ectoderm, and we have these neural crests and the note cord, and then the surface ectoderm, neural crest, and the neural tube, and we have the somite and the note cord, and we're going to start to look at how this is going to uh, ultimately fuse over into the midline and uh, form the structures that we notice in adults. So closure of the neural tube begins at the end of week three, complete by the end of week four. Folic acid is important for this step and extends cranially, eventually the brain and caudally the spine, and the neural crest, lateral ectodermal cells, pulled along and form sensory nerve cells and other important structures. And here we can just see at C, 20 days, we've got the neural fold, the neural grow, neural groove, the somite covered by the ectoderm, this primitive streak, and it's all beginning to fuse in. Here we have the neural crest, and we can see this region here, the colon, which we're going to talk about in a moment, the neural crests and the somite, the neural fold, and then we've got the intermediate mesoderm, and then we have a, a lateral plate, splanchnic mesoderm, and a somatic, uh, somatic mesoderm as well, which we're going to talk about. So the mesoderm begins to differentiate. We've got the lateral to the notochord, week three, extends cranially and cordally from head to tail or crown to rump. Divisions of the mesoderm, mesoderm into three regions. We've got the somites, 40 pairs of body segments, repeating units like building blocks by the end of week four. 
intermediate mesoderm just lateral to the somites got the lateral plate which splits to form the colon the cavity which we can see here so the divisions of the mesodermal lateral plate we've got the somatic mesoderm opposed to the ectoderm splanchnic mesoderm opposed to the endoderm colon in between which will become the serous cavities of the ventral body cavity peritoneal pericardial plural so folding begins at week four and the main differences between the three week embryo and the adult body is that the embryo is still a flat disc so here we can just see this, uh, this flat disc of ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm this trilaminar uh, embryonic disc and then what we're going to have is we're going to go from here we get to our lateral fold which is going to form this future gut from the digestive tube uh, you can see here that this is going to have the endoderm being formed on the inside so as we continue to progress the 24 days the embryo protrudes into an amniotic cavity we see the somites seen through the ectoderm and the head and the tail are all starting to fold in and the yolk sac is moving as well the future anal canal will be in this region that we can see so we can see the neural tube the node cord the primitive gut and then of course we have the future opening between the mouth and the pharynx so all of this is starting to happen at this very important time so day 23 uh, we're continuing with this this folding uh, and then we can see the ectoderm and the cermite and the neural tube and neural tube is forming the notochord and the endoderm are still continuing round into the midline the somatic portion of the lateral mesoderm is developing colon and then the splanchnic portion of the lateral mesoderm and then we can see that we have as we continue through we have the somatic mesoderm and the colon this actual area here now uh, from uh, when we look at it before uh, as we progress through we have these further walls we have the region which is going to become the future gut the future digestive tube and then this splanchnic mesoderm which we're going to look at as we progress through so the cylindrical human body plan is accomplished by day 28 it's about half a centimeter wide and here we can see the somite the dermatome the myotome and skeletome we have the neural tube we have the ectoderm the epidermis the ectoderm the gut lining the endoderm uh, the limb bud so we're going to talk about limbs uh, that's going to be our next lecture on limb budding and then we're going to have the parietal serosa the somatic mesoderm the dermis the somatic mesoderm and the peritoneal cavity the colon and this would be the smooth and connective muscle of the gut and the splanchnic mesoderm so if we just look here this is a simplified cross section through the abdomen of an adult essentially the same as above so you can just see from even at this very early stage at day 28 uh, and then looking at the adult form system uh, you can imagine how all of this is eventually going to the neural tube form uh, here and of course the uh, other areas pushing in midline or anterior and into the midline so here we can see the spinal cord and the vertebral column and the kidneys so this is all going to be the future site of the kidneys and the inner tube and lining of the digestive tube and the muscles of the digestive tube and the viscera and these various visceral layers so this is important to understand because when you consider general visceral efferents general visceral afferents general somatic efferents general somatic afferents in relation to the body wall and you think about the visceral layers uh, you know what's visceral what's parietal within the peritoneum or the pleura visceral pleura um, parietal pleura and visceral peritoneum parietal peritoneum uh, the understanding of the embryological development really really helps with that and of course it helps with the transition of the veins arteries and nerves from the posterior aspect round to the midline so the major derivatives of the embryonic germ there well, let's start with the ectoderm and look at what the ectoderm is going to form so we have the epiblast the ectoderm 
epidermis, hair, nails, glands of skin, brain and spinal cord, neural crests, sensory nerve cells and some nervous structures, pigment cells, portions of skeleton, blood vessels in the head and neck. Then we have the mesoderm, which is going to give off the notochord, which is going to be the nucleus pulposus of the IVDs, the intervertebral discs. Then we have the somite region of the mesoderm, uh, it's going to be the skeletone, vertebral, uh, vertebra and ribs, the dermatone, dermis of the dorsal body region, and the myotone trunk and limb musculature. And then we have the intermediate mesoderm, which is going to form the kidneys and the gonads. Then this lateral plate mesoderm is going to branch off into two. We've got a somatic and splanchnic. The somatic, parietal serosa, dermis of the ventral body region, connective tissue, of the limbs, bones, joints and ligaments, the splanchnic mesoderm, wall of the digestive and respiratory tract, except for the epithelial lining, visceral serosa in the heart and the blood vessels, and finally the endoderm is going to be responsible for this epithelial lining and glands of the digestive and respiratory tracts. So here we can see that 26 days, the embryo, this is when the heart starts pumping, about four weeks or one month, around half a centimetre in size. You can start to see uh, somewhat of a human-like uh, figure starting to appear. We have an ear and pharyngeal arches, the eye, the heart, the upper limb bud, and the tail, the lower limb bud. And, uh, so the somite soon uh, gives rise to the uh, myotomes. Then at three months fetus, around six, seven, uh, six centimetres, we have a uh, far more human looking configuration at this point. And then later on, late fifth month, we're around 19 centimetres, where we're a lot further developed uh, in relation to structures. So the embryonic period, duration first eight weeks after conception, major embryological events, organs form, uh, organs form from the three primary germ tissues and emergency, uh, emergence of the basic body plan. Then by the eight week, we've got about two months, all major organs are in place in at least a rudimentary form. This is why drugs early in pregnancy is so important to avoid, because many of these cause birth defects and the baby's little over uh, so it, it can affect uh, the, uh, the developing fetus in a great deal of many ways uh, drug taking smoking excessive alcohol can stunt the growth uh, and can also cause retardation of certain uh, aspects of the growth cycle so again, we can just see the duration, week 9 to 38, after conception or until birth. Got major fetal events, organs have grown in size and complexity. Here we can see a, around a 20-week fetus, 18.5 centimetres. Then nine months, uh, shown in mother's womb, uh, uterus, uh, preparing for birth. And of course, you can see the umbilical cord, the placenta, the amnion uh, and the wall of the uterus and the eventual uh, passage in which the uh, child shall pass into the world. So any questions uh, please just uh, put the comments down below. Uh, this is going to be the first embryo, basic embryo introduction and then the next one is going to be on limb bud development which is going to come up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and then these also link with my series on the nervous system. So please feel free to, uh, as I say, leave me uh, comments or anything you would additionally like covering, uh, material you'd like covering. And also please feel free to access to my free, on, my free 3D online library uh, you can use these models, you can download them, and you can also uh, 3D print them as well, so if you should so desire.